Hello and good day to everyone who is currently watching my report. Before I begin, I'd want to introduce myself. I'm Ramon Angelo de Guzman. And for today's presentation, I'm introducing to you the one of the famous master architect in 19th to 21st century. And as you can see in my presentation, you already know who I'm going to introduce to you. So his name is Ir Sarinen. And he is a Finnish-American architect and an industrial designer. Born in 28th of August 1910 in Kirkkonumi, Finland. So, he is a son of a sculptor and a well known, respected architect, Eliel Sarinen. And his mother, Loho Sarinen, was a gifted sculptor, weaver, photographer, and an architectural model maker. <clears throat> Iro and his sister, Eva Lisa Sarinen, grew and raised in an environment where were full of blueprints, scales, drafting tables, and creative people. Thus, we might say that Sarnen, Ir Sarnen, was destined to be an architect. In 1923, the Sarnens immigrated to the United States and lived in Michigan, where Iro studied sculpture at the Académie de la Grande Chimere in Paris in 1929. Later, from 1931 to 1934, he studied architecture at Yale University. After two years of fellowship in Europe, he returned to Cranbrook in 1936 to join his father's architectural practice as an instructor of design. During this time, he began to establish a name as an architect who refused to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, who refused to, to be constrained by preconceived notions, sorry. So, he married Lily Swan and had two children, Eric and Susan. However, Saarinen was so dedicated to his job that his first marriage blamed him for, or his wife blamed him for emotional abandonment, but got married again with Lily Swan and had to, <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, but got married again with Alain B. Yulishim and had a child named after his close friend Charles Eames. So, yeah. <clears throat> Sadly, Sarnen died because of a brain tumor in 1961 at Michigan, U.S. at the age of 51, leaving countless projects to be completed by his colleagues. Despite the fact that his life cruelly cut short, his vision lives on true lives on to the structures he created. Uh, despite of his success, Saarinen faced equal amount of criticism both during and after his lifetime. Uh, he was criticized for his design approach, which critics claimed lack of coherence. So that is for his background. So now regarding to his philosophy, here are some of his quotes that I listed. Uh, feel free to pause if you want to read uh, yeah but this one is my favorite architecture is not just here to give space and shelter for men but architecture <clears throat> I'm sorry but architecture also has the purpose of making marking and enhancing man's time on earth so he believed that building should make an expressive statement which expand expanded the scope of modern architecture he was known for adapting his style to the project's requirements, which include simple sweeping arch structural arcs. He designed a spectacular assortment of products based on color, form, and material. And he uses curve and cantilever vocabulary. So all of this can be seen in his works, which I will show you later, or uh, after I explain his architectural style. So, <clears throat> excuse me. As I mentioned, Iro worked with his father for so many years and owed most of his early architecture's expertise to him. But he didn't stay in his father's shadow for so long. Following his father's death in 1950, Saarinen established his own architectural firm, uh, Iro Saarinen and Associates, and began to make a name for himself that uh, Iro Saarinen and his Associates in both architecture and furniture realms as a neo-futuristic design. 
which means um, that his works focus on focus on creating an idealistic vision of the future and associated with structures that appears to defy natural physics and were previously only seen in sci-fi movies. So uh, you'll see later an example uh, when I show you his works. Uh, the design are progressively utilizing new technologies to create seemingly impossible forms and unique structures that have never seen I've never seen and have never been done before by any architect. So, so for his famous works, I initially shocked when I, when he when I saw his designs, and yeah, here is the Klein Hans Musical Hall, Music Hall, built in 1940s Buffalo, New York, U.S. Embassy, 1960 London, United Kingdom. Uh, North Christian Church, 1964, Columbus, Indiana. And I would like to add some info that Klein Hans Music Hall in in Buffalo, New York was uh, designed by him and with his father. So yeah. And CBS Building, 1965, New York. Lincoln Center, 1965, New York. Thomas K. Watson Research Center, New York as well. Chris Auditorium, Chris uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, but Krish Auditorium, Brunswick, United States. David S. Ingalls Rank, 1958. <clears throat> uh, in Con Connecticut. Uh, and Meet Chapel, 1955, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, uh, it is a simple circular volume with a complex and magical interior. The interior form and light, which were intended to stimulate spirituality in the visitor, uh, overshadowing Sarnan's modest design. So, next, Washington Dulles International Airport, built in 1962, Dulles, Virginia. Uh, Ir Sarnan was chosen because of his ability to give graceful elegance, which, which is analogous to, to give the essence of flying, and when. When he was tasked with creating the terminal terminal's entry, he was uh, forced to construct an articulated entrance that would stand out against the modern and repetitive structures. So the next one is TWA Flight Center, built in 1962. I'm sorry, New York. Uh, this what this is what this is what I like about his approach or his style. And what I have mentioned, the uh, essence of flying, when when I explain what is Washington Dulles International Airport is the, you know. <clears throat> so the first time I saw this structure, it grabs my interest from the fluid and open interior to wing-like wing -like concrete, concrete shell of the roof. Hero Saranin sought to convey the impression of flying in all parts of the structure. So as you can see there, it's like um, it's like a f uh, flying bird, uh, something like that. And at the as a request for DWA, Saranin created more than just a functional terminal. He created a gigantic m memorial to an airline and a and an aviation itself. So, uh, yeah, so. The next one is Gateway Arc, Arch, 1965, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I was astounded to learn that Eero designed designed this structure. Structure, sorry, the Gateway Arc, the nation's tallest landmark, has welcomed visitors for so many years. I I think uh, 50 years. It's uh, with its iconic awe-inspiring shape. So, <clears throat> sorry. And what I like about it is that I already saw it. I, I already saw this one before, even though I haven't taken architecture yet. And I think when I was in, the first time I saw this is when I was in grade school or elementary. So when I look for Irosarinian's works, I kind of familiar with some of them. And as I recall the movies and series that I have previous, previously watched, I realized that it was featured to that series and movies so this one the gateway arc in marvel series what if so 
this scene is when Thor, the God of Thunder, throw a party and they vandalize the many structures in Earth, on Earth, especially this one. They removed it and put it back when Free, when Thor's mom arrived on, on Earth, Frigga. And yeah, so the next one is this GM Technical Center, General <clears throat> Motor Technical Center in Transformers Age of Extinction. So this scene, this one, this scene, uh, <clears throat> when when Bumblebee first saw the replica of him, uh, manufactured by human named Stinger. So they try to copy Bumblebee. And the last one is the tulip chair in Star Trek. So yeah, as you can see in the chair, it is so futuristic back then. So um, <clears throat> these famous architects that we study in order to report help us understand what spans centuries and has left its mark all over the world. So, yeah. Uh, from various architectural approaches, styles, and to their distinct philosophies, I believe that studying their works uh, can help us to develop our creativity, bringing, bringing inspiration from their background and creations, and as well as appreciating their achievements and contribution to architecture so yeah thank you for listening and here's my reference for this presentation thank you so much for listening have a good day